Jimmy. Jim, Jim, Jimmy. Jim, James, son! Welcome back to the Jimmy Jim Jim's channel. I am your host, and today is the third and possibly final installment of the $400 1995 Toyota Corolla, which I have named Terra. This video has been longly delayed due to body shop issues, uh, the Lenovo computer I have cooked a hard drive after only two years. Thanks a lot, Lenovo. Real quality product. But uh, regardless of all those things, I'd like to introduce you to what Terra the Corolla looks like only a few months later. So the next thing we're going to work on is removing these old cracked taillights. You can see there's a crack there. It's all faded. They're nasty. They're missing the little bevels. We are going to move on from these to these, a set of 95 to 97 taillights with the, uh, what do they call it? The center bar, a third center bar, whatever you want to call it. It's like a reflector panel. We're just going to go ahead and throw those on real quick to complement the nice gold emblems and the new paint. There it is. Ooh, look at that. Oh me, oh my. Damn, <laughs> this car is coming out beautifully. Uh, man, I still got to get those little pieces painted because the painter forgot to paint those. Thank you, man, professional painter. Charging me a well over a thousand bucks to paint the car and you forget the little freaking plastic or whatever. Thank you. See, so I added these smoke vents. Aren't those nice? A little cheap, but they're nice. Got the Toyota TEQ sticker there. I'm going to have it limo tinted all the way around the back and 25% tinted in the front. Not very thrilled to begin about the door handles. Wish they didn't do that. I'm going to change them all anyway. Let me take a look. I mean, those gold badges really make the damn thing just pop. This car is going to look so good when it's done. Man. A little bit of the Jimmy orgasms over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're starting to look shabby. We're going to have to get you up to spiff. And I believe I just got a call something else is about to come in another car you're probably wondering what happened to the hyundai i traded it i traded it so i believe the new car that i traded it for is going to come in and you guys are going to love this one she's a classic so let's see if i can go get that thing so now we have those beautiful new taillights but the headlights let our baby down they're faded they have overspray on them they're yellowed don't worry jimmy's got the fix for all what ails you let me go get my uh new set shall we that there is a set of complete headlights and corner lights i don't have the marker lights yet they have not come in but regardless a whole set of lights for this beautiful shiny automobile so let's go ahead and throw those in they're not typically too hard you can even see like i mentioned previously gold emblem that was a bitch to get in there it did not want to go in there there she is all ripped apart time to take these babies out of their boxes and slap them on i can't wait to see that nice shining front end it's really gonna pull the room together that rug really tied the room together, did it not? Fucking A. And this guy peed on it. Donnie, please. Or the car in this case. <laughs> so they did fit in okay. The passenger side one fits a lot better than the driver side one. The problem I seem to be having is both of these are not lining up with the screw holes. Especially this one. So somehow I've got to adjust these forward and get the screw holes to line up. This one sits flush here with a little bit of stick out right there and this one sits mostly flush until it gets to about here 
Whether or not that's the quality of the parts or the car having been smacked at one point, I did have to replace this hood when we went to paint the vehicle, so it's possible the front end could have a slight tweak to it. I don't know, but damn if that doesn't look amazing. Stupid cat it wants to come out here with me while I'm doing the video. Look at that. How in the world could you be mad at that? Nice fitment, nice clean paint. It's all covered in dust because we had a nasty dust storm the other day. Let's see if I can go around here and show you. Oh boy, putting that one to shame. Even putting this one to shame a little bit. But uh, let's go inside now because we have some stereo upgrades to do. I do love me shit ass dual stereo that's in here, which I hate. I fucking hate it. So I'm gonna replace it with this actual Sony one. Much better in quality. It's got the 55 watt times four extra bass. I've got a set of four kickers, two for the fronts, two in the rears that we're gonna put in. That way we have a whole complete stereo system. I also have a new cup holder because this one's kinda, it works, but it doesn't stay in. So I have a replacement for that. Hey, there's my emblems they took off. Huh. Well, I don't need those anymore. I got those nice gold ones. Let's go ahead and pop the stereo out. All right, nice new Sony stereo installed. You can say bye-bye to the Duel, which I promptly threw in the bin. New speaker time. We got a set of kicker. What are these? DSC 40s. And those are going to go smack dab where the Pioneers are currently living. The Pioneers are okay, but they're not as good as this. So we're going to go ahead and throw those on. I apologize if I'm rushing through this one. I have one day off for the next two weeks, and this is it. And I have a doctor's appointment at 1.15 and a car buying appointment at noon. So many things, many places, many lives, many masters. Gotta run around, so let's go. There we go, new kicker speaker installed, old Pioneer, ready to go in the trash. These aren't that bad, actually, but I prefer the kickers. So let's button this all back up and head over to the next one. It is yet another morning working on the Corolla, the red one, since there's so many of them around here at this point. We're going to be doing shocks all the way around. I have the first two for the front right here. The other two are in the trunk. This is a pretty simple operation. Just got to get the wheel off. There's two large 19 millimeter bolts, three 14s on top, and then like a 10 millimeter brake line. And then you just got to line it all up. So uh, not really that hard. So let's just get right into it. As you can see, super simple. Two nuts. The bolts go through. The three nuts are up on top. And this strut is completely blown. It's disgusting and it definitely needs to be changed. At some point I'm gonna have to come in here and change these sway bar links. You can tell they kind of move. They shouldn't move with your hand. You shouldn't be able to turn them. So that's gonna be an issue. There's also a single 10 millimeter nut here holding the brake line hose on. So all in all, shouldn't be too hard. So there it is. That probably took five minutes, if that. But these shocks are, uh, not only did they overspray them when they painted the car, they're just completely shot. Shot in every regard, so. Good thing we got the new ones to throw in there. The brand is called Most P. I'm not even making that up. Look at that. Most. Oh, Most Plu. Most Plu? I don't know. As long as they're not complete shit. That's all that matters to me. So there we go. One new strut. Two new struts. The front is done. Probably about 35 minutes, more or less. Uh, we have a guest star on the show. It's Ren from Ren and Stimpy. See little Ren over there? In his stupid little jacket. Oh, Stimpy. Just never stops making noise. Little shit monkey. But anyway, we got them both uh, in there. See? Nice and tidy. Now we got to move on to the rears, which are infinitely harder because they're hidden behind the seats. You got to take the seats out. You got to... Uh, the, the brake line runs through the freaking strut. So you have to un... Like, literally unbolt the brake line, disconnect it, bleed the brakes. We're not going to be doing that. I'm going to perform the old slice of on the little little metal tabulus coming off of there, and that's going to be the end of that. We're not messing with Benny bl uh, Brake Bleeding. Blake Breeding? Breeding Blakes? I don't know, maybe. Somewhere out there, there's a whole island on dudes called Blake, and I've just been breeding them this whole time. I think Jeffrey Epstein was doing that. All right, then let's, let's get off that topic. Let's move on to the rear brakes. I do quite hate having to do the rear struts in these vehicles. There's just so much involved that isn't involved in the front. Makes a 10 minute process an hour process. So the back seat's gotta come out of this one. Luckily in a Corolla, that's all that took. And now there's no more back seat. Hey, there's that rag I was looking for after I changed the fuel pump. Well, what do you know? So you gotta take this bolt out and then this whole piece comes out and way up here on top is the actual strut mount. That's not really the hard part. 
The hard part of this, which you can't see right now, well, I'll show you later, is that the brake line runs through the actual strut for some reason or another. Who knows whose stupid fucking idea that one was. Somewhere in Japan, there's a dude laughing at me right now. Somewhere in Koito. <laughs> I made you different. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's get to it. So we got the little side bolster thing out. It's right there. I had them steam clean the inside of this car, and they did the worst job humanly possible. I am fucking upset about that. They did not remove half the stains. They didn't even fucking move the seat belts, and it was like 80 bucks. So not happy about that. Uh, there is the mount. Very nice and easy for the most part to get to. Just three 12 millimeter bolts. And then we got to jack the back of the car up and get this wheel off. So here's why I don't like the rears. I mean, these are blown. These are beyond being covered in nasty little spider webs. Little spideries. Um, they have a sway bar link, which is arguably bad anyway. So that's going to be fun to get that off without breaking it. And then if, it's, if that wasn't the irritating part, you got this. See this? This brake line runs. There is no, there is no cutout. It runs through the caliper so i'm gonna have to bang this pin out and then just cut a notch in it and bend it out of the way because i'm not bleeding the brakes on this car i'm not gonna breed those blakes remember what i said <laughs> oh why and they got red overspray on everything i asked them specifically not to do this so now i gotta fix that up too how lovely well that's how that works you just go ahead and snap that little metal bracket off these are metal and they hold themselves in place anyway I know some of you are going to have a stroke and go, oh my god, that's dangerous. You're going to die. It's my car. I'm probably going to die in it anyway because it has very limited safety features and very thin door pillars. And uh, yeah, it's my car. I'm not selling it. So, oh well, who gives a uh, who gives a rat speckled ass, right? And I'm probably not going to do this to the new one. I'm going to try to cut a gentle notch in it and then just move it out the way and bend it back in place. I also have a little MIG welder that I could probably just weld back on there. Yes, that's how lazy I am, folks. Isn't that lazy? You'd be this lazy too if you get one day off a week to film these videos, edit them, upload them, and do everything else, and still have to fix your own car. And other cars. Because I still have other people's car to fix today, and I gotta fix my freaking station wagon over there. So we are, we are on the grind, on the hustle, reading those blakes, whatever. <laughs> Let's go. So now we're into the more complicated part. The entire rear end of this vehicle has to be lifted equally off the ground because of the way the sway bar link setup works in this car is they are connected to the struts, so they have to be equal at all times. Even if you take the bolt out of one side, let's say you take it off the left like this, it'll droop, but still stay connected to the sway bar. So you have to take both sway bar links off at the same time where you end up with something like this, where it's just hanging on there and there's no way to get that off. See, the strut moves and you can barely do it uh, like that. And that is because I've disconnected it on both sides. Otherwise, when you come around here, you can see the wheel is off and the car is off the ground equally on this side as it is on that side because otherwise the sway bar link will do this instead of sit straight like it's supposed to make your life infinitely more difficult so now we can work on putting these new rears in there are the old rear struts out these are destroyed as are the sway bar links unfortunately i don't know if you can see this but ruined you should not be able to move those with hands you should need a pair of vice grips or a hammer to smack it in place. These are toasted. So I'm going to have to put these on the list of things that I will need to change. I also do not like the cracking on that rear brake hose. These will be, have to be changed in the future as well. But for now, we just need the car to not bounce all over the place. So this one took the better part of 45 minutes to get installed, mostly because of those nuts on top. They, the bolt holes do not line up. I had to drill the hole slightly, slightly larger, just like a fraction of a millimeter. Sway bar link reinstalled, and yes, just so you guys don't explode, okay? I put a little bead right there and a little bead right there, connected the metal back together, and even the clip fits, so we're all secure. Okay, just tacked it in place. Now there's no wiggling, no problems, and I gotta move on to the next side, which is arguably just as frustrating. But we only got one more to go. Finished the other side, now we're on to the passenger side. This will be the last one. Um, we did find... A carcass, unfortunately. There was a little victim. And there it is. That's unfortunate. Probably starved. Probably crawled up in here and starved. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, it's got a butthole. What the f... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of cool. I'm not going to keep this because I have no reason to, but... There you go. A little deer, I think. But a deer... or oh, That's a giraffe, I guess. I don't know. A giraffe with a short neck. Huh. Don't know. 
So finally, and a lot of you will absolutely be thrilled about this, we are starting the most irritating section, which is the headliner. Also the most difficult, in my opinion. Um, I finally have the vinyl material, the special glue, the time. The only thing I'm lacking is the patience. <laughs> so what do you know? Three out of four ain't bad. I've already taken off one of the handles, and I'm popping this trim here loose. This is going to be a difficult task without breaking every single very fragile plastic interior piece. For reference, this stupid little tab basically shattered because it's, you know, 30-year-old plastic. We are cooking up another windstorm right now. See the trees? That's why we are in here instead of out there. So I may have to audio narrate over some of this. Hopefully taking this out doesn't completely ruin my nicely steam cleaned interior. Probably hard to tell, but I had the interior of this car professionally steam cleaned. See how nice and clean the carpets and the door panels and most of the vehicle is. They didn't do a 100% perfect job, but uh, for the price, I think it came out pretty good. So uh, let us get started on this abysmal project. We are pretty far into the process now. We are already breaking things, of course. So one of the clips that holds the sun visor in decided to commit ritualistic suicide. No surprise, these things are 30 years old, so I will have to replace those. Uh, this kind of is already sagging just for me taking off everything. I bet you the glue that holds this up is kind of not holding it up anymore. It's probably just held in by the trim. All of the handles are off. So... The next thing is to start popping the trim loose on all four sides without breaking anything. That's the hard part. And then taking these pillar, these, uh, whatever you want to call them, these complete pillar assemblies off. That's going to be the difficult part. So I did manage to get it down without breaking anything further. Basically a miracle by this point. But uh, hopefully with this seat backwards, we can slant it this way and pull it out the door in one piece. There was nothing, no amount of glue was holding this to the roof anymore. Uh, the only thing that was holding it up are these stupid little flimsy pins and some screws, and that is about it. But the time is near. Well, there you go, the headliner is out. Once you take it out, it really gives you a perspective of how much you actually get when you're buying a car, which is not much. Stamp sheet metal, some panels, an engine and transmission. Nothing more than that, really. I still got to fix this one of these days. I never did put the screws back in it, but it works as is. This was the major irritants in my ass. I just really wanted to get this cleaned up. So let's move on to applying the new stuff. I figured you guys might want to see this because it's satisfying or something. Who knows? But you can see uh, the old stuff just, I mean, it rubs right off. Yeah, there's nothing holding that on anymore. We got Bella. Isn't that right, Miss Bella? Come here, Miss Bella. That's right. <laughs> Star of the show right there. I know, baby. I know. I know. What do you think? You think it'll all come off good? Yeah? It will. Let's just keep scrubbing and rubbing. So how did it come out? Um, well, it's pretty good. I am not a fan of certain things. There are little blemishes like this that probably aren't going to come out. I would say 50% of these blemishes are the fault of me, and 50% are the fault of the shipper, who instead of sending it in a roll like was agreed upon when I bought it, sent it folded up like a beach towel. And they assured me that these lines, because these lines are from when they folded it, you can see, they assured me those would come out and they never did. So somebody's getting a negative review. That's absolutely for sure. But, all things considered, I still have to put this handle back on, and that one doesn't have a handle. All things considered, it came out okay. We only ended up breaking this thing for the uh, sun visor, which I'm surprised considering the age of everything in this vehicle. So I'm going to go head on to the junkyard and see if I can get some more of those clips. And maybe a brake pedal. I just realized my brake pedal pad is gone, so... Overall, for the price, I guess I really can't complain. The wind will not let up. It just slammed the door on me like a fucking phantom. Um, I, I, the wind will not let up, so that's why the last few video clips are like spliced together. And the audio is all off because I, the wind, the rain, the wind, the sleet, like the weather has just been 100% against me on this one. But what do you say, huh? Better than nothing, I guess. So, Jimmy's not happy. But uh, he never is. So it's time for me to turn that little thing that has a, a smiley face into a frowny face, which I can actually do. So now that we have the headliner mostly finished and this has become my mood, 
Um, there's one more thing I want to tackle for the day before I give up, and that is this. Every single time I get in this car, because of my height of 5'11"-ish, I smack my kneecaps on this thing, and it's already broken anyway. So I have a nice functional replacement here that still clips in place like it should. The hard part is getting it out, and then the new one getting it in without completely snapping these little precious plastic bolt pieces. So let's see if we can do that without completely ruining the steering column. I mean, that absolutely disintegrated. I might as well have pulled a 3,000-year-old mummy out of the steering column. I literally touched it and just, bah, parts. <laughs> Hopefully this one does not go the same way. I mean, just look at this. I, it's got to be like 80 mile an hour winds at least. Let me show you something. Disgusting. But anyway, let's put that steering column in. Well, that looks a lot better and a lot sturdier. It's not broken anymore. It is properly screwed in at all four points and it's not faded. So that makes it a lot nicer to drive in here. Unfortunately, the dust has just like, look at that. That's just from being here for like the past five minutes. So I think we're gonna go ahead and call any outside adventures today complete. The junkyard is going to have to wait for my next day off because this is just too much to uh, deal with right now. So here we are at the end of part three. I've gotten the interior to basically what I am happy with. There are a few things I would like to adjust. Center console needs to be bolted in still. Uh, the brake pad needs to be replaced because it's worn through due to age. The clock has stopped working on the dashboard because it has internally shorted out. I've already checked it out and it just needs a replacement. That's cheap enough at the junkyard and it needs a clip for the sun visor. Other than that, the interior is completely functioning now. Um, after this video, I'd like to take the vehicle to get tinted all in the rear, uh, probably limo tint in the rear, 25% in the front, because in the summer, I'm definitely gonna need that. It gets hot. But in terms of the interior, we're nearly done. The exterior, such as the bodywork and the paintwork and all that is done. We'll be doing no further things to the exterior. Uh, the next video will be focusing on mechanicals. So, Basically, I'm going to be changing the air conditioning compressor, vacuuming the system, possibly changing the condenser. I don't know yet. Once we get in there, we'll figure it out. And uh, maybe change the alternator since I already have to take the alternator out to actually get to the AC compressor. And the lights kind of dim occasionally when you have a bunch of things running all at once inside the car. So, uh, like I said, that's going to be end of part three. This video should come out soon and then we will... Uh, focus on that wagon in front of us, that old school Corolla wagon, which I already have the video waiting for you guys. I just need to get everything in line to be able to upload the videos in some sort of common sequence because they're all out of order and out of this and that because of body shop problems, my computer dying, etc., etc. It all needs to be lined up and then I can upload everything. But thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate it. Hopefully you're enjoying the resurrection of this old Corolla. I'm having a great time doing this car. I didn't expect to... Uh, go this far or fall in love with this vehicle like I have but I like it you know I plan on keeping it kind of plan on keeping all my Corollas it's becoming a small problem uh, as of late but anyway like I said thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one so bye